and gentlemen, it's Chris at Lamp Punch Forge. If you excuse me today, I have a bit of a cold, and it doesn't seem to be getting better anytime soon, so I am a bit stuffy. Today, we're going to set a stone, set a stone in prongs, to be exact. This one is, uh, this is kind of like the down and dirty version of prong setting, so I may not be technically correct when it comes to a lot of my terminology, but please forgive me. I can still set a stone, even though I may not know what it's called. But before we begin, I'd like to remind you that if you guys are liking the videos, please subscribe, like a video or three or all of them, and then leave me a comment down below. Something you may want to see, something you like, something you dislike. I'm all about the, the comment and the subscribe. The more subscribes we can get, the more likes, the more views, the more all that stuff, the the more I know that you guys are liking what you're seeing, I can keep going with it. So, without further ado, hit subscribe. All right, prong settings. Basically, today I'm gonna do a three millimeter. And what I have are some prongs in a ring that have been kind of roughed out. But in order to meet the angles of a gemstone, those roughed out, um, right now they're kind of curved, just like little indentations like this, and they're curved. But I'm gonna ignore this guy just for the sake of doing it. So, gemstones have your crown. The center part's called a girdle. And it's usually just enough that it'll fit into this area. And then here is your pavilion. Or however they do it. I'm not very good at drawing them, but I am pretty decent at cutting them. So, yeah, there's our gemstone. So what we want to do is we want to make this meet this. And we want to do it so that it's not going to put any extra stress on the stone. We want it to kind of cradle it, give it a nice warm hug. So in order to do that, we have a couple burrs that we're going to try and use here. This one is called a heart burr. It looks roughly like this. I'll try and get a close up for you. Maybe. Let's zoom. I bet I can get a zoom. So, yeah, that's a heart purr. Tiny. They come in all sizes. And then we have, so there's your heart. Let's do this. Yay, heart purr. And then we have our flush setting. So, this guy. I may get that terminology wrong, but that's what I use it for flush setting and then what this portion is this meets the pavilion of your stone so that when you're setting it it has a nice place to rest and then we have our ball burr it's just fun to say ball burr you guys have probably seen these before they're just a ball with burrs on it so that's him. That's for making nice indentations for starting to do other settings, like if you're going to do a pave or something like that. And then the cut burr. Cut burr is more for finishing up prongs. This guy's got a little cup, hence the name, in it. And all of the cutting edges are on the inside of that cup. What that's going to do is it's going to go right there and it's going to smooth those out once you finish setting your stone um, it's also made for making the ends of wire a little bit more uh, presentable if you're doing uh, wire wrapping or something like that you can use a bulb or to clean up your clean up your ends all right so what we are going to do is we're going to take that heart burr and we're going to put it in our flex shaft and we're going to make these perfect 
so that they give our stone warm hugs. And these are our stones. We're gonna use amethyst today. We're only gonna set one, but why buy one when you can buy 12? So there we go. These are three millimeter amethyst. And we are going to set it in that ring. So let me get this stuff set up and we will uh, cut and set. Before we get too far into the setting, I'd like to share some of the setting burrs. So these guys are brand new, all different sizes, all different shapes. Some of these are cup, some of them are ball. Um, you got your flesh setting and you got your heart burrs. So different size bits for different size stones. One of my favorite sets is old and I can't find the lid, but here's the set. So this is a, it's a nice wooden, wooden case. Most of these are, in fact, all of them are used. Some of them still have some of the precious metal grindings on them, but I like old tools and this, I couldn't pass up this. It's in a nice old wood case, has the lid for it. And uh, yeah, the burrs are still sharp and pretty and old. And that's what I love. So anyway, once we get the uh, burrs cut, bur the ring cut with the burrs, we'll go ahead and come back and uh, talk a little bit more about the setting portion. All right, we have our ring set up in our ball vise. I've got the proper size burr, heart burr selected. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in there in each of these four prongs and at a nice upward angle. I'm trying to bump my camera here. We're gonna go in and we're gonna cut each of these. So I'm watching what I'm doing through the camera right now. I'm not actually doing it, but each same, we're gonna go around, we're gonna do a slight cut in all of those. So the burr I have lubed. I got some, uh, I think, peppy lube on it. And we're just gonna go in there and go cut, 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 cut. Just a little bit, just take a little bit of metal away and make a nice place for that gemstone to get a warm hug. So I'm gonna probably do that in Fast forward so you guys don't have to watch the entire process. It sometimes takes a little while. So I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, here we are ready to pull our stone out. We've got our ring kind of all done like we needed to. We just need one. Let's put the rest of those back and eventually I'll take these out of the bag and I'll put them in my gem storage containers. All right, so in order to get a hold of the stone so I can work with it, what I do is I use a product called Loctite's Putty. Well, let's see exactly what it's called here. I'll grab the name of it. Loctite Fontac. That stuff works really well. It leaves no sticky and it holds up to one pound, which unfortunately this stone is less than one pound. So this will allow me to hold on to the putty and grip the stone and I won't have to try and fumble it around. So now my stone is on my putty. 
Try to zoom in here. There's my amethyst. And then I'm going to use this to be able to put it and place it in the ring to see whether or not I can get it to fit, what adjustments I need. These are my setting pliers. These are what I'll use to kind of close the prongs in a little bit. And there's my vise. So I'm going to sit down so I can see what I'm doing and try and keep my hands out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take the stone, I'm going to put it right in there. If it wants to come off, which it does not. Let me adjust this. There we go. Stone is on. I'm going to zoom in here for you. Kind of see what's going on. So right now, the stone is a little off center. Right here. Need to push it down. And I should be able to get it to click in. This is the hardest part, just trying to get that stone in there right. So I'll use my putty. Hear that click? That's what you want. You want that stone to click in there. And that means that the prongs are just far enough apart to give some give, some resistance, and then have that stone pop right down in. So that's what we want. So right now that stone is loosely set where we want it. Next, we're going to loosen up our vise a little bit. This is a ball vise, by the way, if I didn't mention it earlier. It allows me to move things around, spin, lose focus. So yeah, spin. I can move around. I can engrave on this. So I'm going to pop this up just a little bit. And tighten it down. What I'm trying to do is get enough room in there for my pliers to come in and set my prongs. And I'm going to go opposites. So I'm going to try and... Lightly squeeze. Lightly squeeze. And I'm doing this in a way that I kind of keep things right where I want it. And this is where those channels using the uh, Harper comes in handy. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before, but doing this type of stuff on camera is pretty hard. I think I need to push this one down a little bit. Let's see if I can do this looking through the camera. Not very well, but it was worth a try. stone is nice and set. Set, just got a little bit of wiggle to it. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do, since I can't, it's difficult for me to do on camera, is I'm going to go and I'm going to do the same thing, only I'm going to get 
my uh, magnifiers on so I can see exactly what I'm doing. But that's the basics of it. You get your stone uh, groove set out with your Harper. You make sure your stone snaps into place. And then you just go around and slightly pinch those prongs around into the grooves that the stone has and the Harper matches. So that is it. I'm going to tighten these up off camera and then uh, I'll come back with something. All right, I have my stone set. And what I'm going to try and do now is get in here and slightly round over some of my prongs. You can do this with a cup burr, but some of the marks that you uh, you put in it when you're setting, you want to try and get those out. Just round over those prongs. I'm using a safe edge file. So this is a triangular with two safe edges and then these both sides are safe. guys don't know what a safe edge file is it's when part of the file whether it's square or rectangular or triangular some of the sides are flattened off so that they don't cut okay I'm gonna try and first see if I'm in the camera which I am yeah, I'm gonna angle my file and try and take off some of the areas of the prong that may catch on the ring. So ideally I'm trying to make something that is no sharp edges, no areas to catch, and I'll have a ring that has less of a uh, opportunity to snag and drop a stone. All right, now I'm gonna use a, a new tool for me. It's a three millimeter Pin. And what this is, is it allows me to pull my abrasive pin out as far as I need to, tighten it down, and then I can sand in these small areas. And so I'm going to use that on the prongs. And let me set this in my flex shaft real quick and find this fella. And then I'll adjust the camera so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing. And then try and get my head in here. And I'm just taking off all the tool marks, rounding off my edges. Yeah, there. 
here we go. That looks pretty nice. I've got a little spot right here I'm going to take care of. See how nice that brings out the shine. Beautiful. So that's it. That's set in the stone. Now it's pretty much just uh, cleaning up the ring, filing down some rough edges, doing a final inspection, and uh, putting a polish on it. But that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, where is it at? It, yeah, right there. Zoom. Yeah, little button right there says subscribe. It likes to be pushed. Push it, please. And leave me a comment, leave me a like, leave me a dislike, all that fun stuff. Hope you'll enjoyed, and hopefully we'll do a little bit more in-depth on the stone setting. Um, maybe with some cabochons and other type stuff. So, thank you. Appreciate you. See you soon.